Hello, this is clip number four of session number one. And in this uh, session, we are going to discuss very important concept, which is functional and non-functional requirement. So we're going to look into what is the meaning of functional requirements or what is the meaning of non-functional requirements. So for many years, the requirements for a software product have been classified broadly as either functional or non-functional. Now the functional requirements are evident now because they describe the observable behavior of the system under various conditions, the behavior which you can observe. However, many people dislike the term which is called as non-functional because that adjective says what the requirements are not, but it doesn't say what they are actually. So they could describe important characteristics or properties of the system. Now these include the system's availability, usability, security, performance, and many other characteristics. Uh, some people consider non-functional requirements uh, to be synonyms uh, with uh, uh, quality attributes. But uh, that is not only restricted to quality attributes, but generally or majorly uh, non-functional requirements uh, falls into quality uh, measurements or attributes. For example, uh, design and implementation constraints are also non-functional requirements as uh, they are external interface requirements. Uh, still other non-functional requirements address the environment in which the system operates, such as platform, portability, compatibility, constraints, and other related or kind of uh, types. Now many products are also affected by compliance, uh, you can say regulatory or certification requirements also from maybe information security perspective, from quality perspective. Now there could, there could be a, a localization of requirements for products that must uh, be taken into account. Uh, for example, the cultures, language, uh, local laws, currencies, terminology, spelling, uh, and other characteristics which are related to specific users or user groups. Uh, though such requirements are specified in non-functional terms, the business analyst typically will derive numerous bits of functionality to ensure that the system possesses uh, all the desired behaviors and the properties. So that is a broad kind of uh, meaning and difference between functional and non-functional uh, requirements. Now, if you look at a few of the examples, uh, say in case of uh, functional requirements, uh, the example can be the software automatically validates customers against the uh, some contact management system. So that can be a functional requirement because that is the basic requirement of your software. That software should automatically validate the customer. Validation should be there. Or the sales system should allow users to record the customer sales. Or another example can be the background color for all windows in the application will be blue and have a hexadecimal RGB color of some value. So these are uh, uh, behavioral items which you can notice, which you can uh, look, which you can, um, uh, which you can record. So all these are functional requirements. Only manager level employees have the right to view the revenue data. So access privileges, it's a functional requirement. The software system should be integrated with banking API. Yes, so this is integration requirement. It's a functional requirement. Now, if you uh, want to talk about examples of non-functional requirements, then the first example can be users must change the initially assigned login password immediately after the first successful login. Moreover, the initial uh, one should not or never be reused actually. So this is not a kind of a compulsory thing. Uh, we, you, you can also uh, have uh, noticed this thing that if you register to a new website or to a new application, you generally receive a mail that this is your username and passkey or password. And on first login, it is advisable that you should change your password. Or whenever you receive the uh, credit card or debit card also, you also receive the first initial PIN from the bank side. And uh, they suggest you to change the PIN on the first use of the card. But that is not kind of a compulsory or a restriction. You can continue using the same pin also. But it is not advised to use the same pin or same password. So it is a non-functional requirement. Or a second example can be employees never allowed to update their salary information. 
yes because it is a task of uh, or maybe only administrator or hr department or your maybe project manager nobody or not a single employee should be allowed to update their own salary information that is that becomes a non functional requirement every unsuccessful attempt by a user to access an item of data shall be recorded on an audit trail so uh, you should keep a track of all the actions which are happening in the system yes it becomes a non functional requirement the software should be portable so moving from one os to other os uh, it does not create any problem so software should be portable yes it becomes non functional requirement so these are the few examples if you want to talk about functional and non functional requirements now if you want to compare functional and non functional requirements this is a chart which you can uh, always remember if you just remember this chart it will be very easy for you to uh, uh, talk about functional and non functional requirements so when i say functional requirement it becomes a verb and when i say non functional requirement it becomes a attribute or it is an attribute it is an attribute functional is a mandatory as we have discussed non functional is not ma mandatory it is not compulsory but it is required so it is non functional requirement then capturing type in, in uh, uh, type in case of functional requirement you can uh, define the functional re requirement using a use case with all the stakeholders and actors in that use case and as we have discussed the non functional requirement that requirement is there because of some uh, quality standard or some other standards so it is a quality attribute the end result of functional requirement it is a product feature and well as non functional requirement becomes a property of a product characteristic of a product so generally functional requirements are very easy to capture because uh, they directly come from the end user and they can be defined they can be observed but non functional requirements uh, they come because of some policy documents some regulations some laws and generally it is hard to capture for normal users the objective of functional requirement is to help you to verify the functionality of the software whereas the objective of the non functional requirement uh, is to help you to verify the performance of the software that's why we always uh, link it with quality attribute performance of the software and likewise uh, uh, remaining uh, comparisons i have uh, given in this chart which you can go through so that is the main uh, part about functional requirement and non functional requirement uh, whenever you deal with any project or any product you will always have a list of functional requirements and you will also have a separate list of non functional requirements and combining both of this then you can create a final requirement document so this is all about functional and non functional requirements and that is the end of clip number 4